right everyone I figured I should do maybe like a quick video on just all the research I've been doing since January in the different areas of the US and what I have found per region like what would be a good viable glamping type of business for each one and just how easy it is for the permitting or passing um, your idea through the county and getting it actually to become a viable like legal running business. So the area that I have researched the most is actually the one that I was going to put my first site, which is San Luis uh, Valley. It's in Colorado, very, very remote, out in the middle of nowhere. It's close to New Mexico and it's, it's a few hour drive from Denver. And I chose that area because it has a really cool like sand dune park and it has other nature spots and it's really remote and just secluded, which I think is perfect for glamping. But a few, I guess, things I ran into as far as making it a viable option for me or at least made me kind of steer away from it. That area gets super, super cold in the winter time. So the temperature, the lows can get down into like negative seven and it does get quite a bit of snow and a lot of the roads, probably the one you would be using to get into your campground or whoever's coming into there, they would probably use roads that they couldn't use in the winter time unless you wanna spend all of that money plowing them or salting them or doing something like that. And another thing I ran into is that one of the counties that I spoke to, they said you absolutely cannot use portable bathrooms, that you would have to build an actual proper bathroom with septic and all of that. And you cannot use hauled water that you would have to put a well in. And those two things are just super expensive. So the land there is really cheap though. So that's what really drew me in was the surrounding area, the remoteness of it. There's not a lot of competition. And I feel like it's an area that's really up and coming. Like not a lot of people know about it, but I feel like it with the proper marketing, it could be something really cool. But for me being a small investor, it just wasn't a good first option for me. Like maybe I'll revisit it in the future when I have more buying power, when I have, uh, when I can like pay a team that can help me navigate with the county permits, things like that, because they did say there were a couple other people that were looking to open campgrounds and they told me whoever has the best business plan and the best viable option of how they're going to sustain it that's who they were going to give permission to, to build it. And that to me, I'm, I don't know if it's what they meant, but I kind of took that as they were going to give it to whoever has the most money to build something out that's just really expensive and has a lot of like infrastructure put in place. And that just wasn't me. So I didn't want to keep pursuing that. If first of all, the season was really short um, for actually renting the tents out because of the super cold winters and the roads becoming um, so bad that you can't really drive on them. And maybe doing all of this work and not really getting anywhere. But I did do a lot of market research there and I do think it's a really awesome area. So if you have a lot of like capital to get something up and going, and I have a really cool idea that would only work in really cold climates. And I actually came up with the idea when I was going to build there. And so I'm kind of like putting that to the side for a minute, but it's, I absolutely love it. It's a really, really ingenious idea. And I would like to revisit it maybe when I have a few fights up and running and I can maybe put it together because of course in my mind, I always dream really big. Like in my mind, I have these really phenomenal and amazing infrastructure or designs. And of course when I research them, they're like really expensive. I guess anything that's like really expensive can be really cool. And so they kind of go hand in hand, especially with construction the cooler the project looks or is usually the more expensive it is, the grander it is, the bigger it is. And I just, I always think on that scale of like taking something to 
I just like taking it to heights that are just going to wow people. And to do that, you need a lot of money. So the first site I'm doing, I'm not gonna say where I'm putting it. I don't need a land grab. So, <laughs> I mean, I already, there's already like, the land has gone up so much in price since I started looking at it in January. Cause this, I'm actually revisiting a former area I was thinking about doing, but I was kind of deterred from because it, the land was more expensive than the San Luis Valley. But now I'm kind of set on it and I probably am going to have to get a business loan which is kind of scary because I don't like debt and I don't like taking loans. This actually will probably be one of the only, like right now I'm debt free. This would be a loan that I would have to take out to be my only loan right now. And I just want to make sure that I get really good rates and things like that. And I have really good credit. I have money saved. So I feel like I would be a pretty good candidate. And then my boyfriend works and he has income because I lost my job in January. So my income is not gonna be you know help with the loan so he'll be on there and he's getting a portion of the business as well even though it's all my idea and I've been working on it for months and months to get it up and going but our plan is maybe by maybe in six months or so we can have it up and running oh um some of the other areas that I've been looking at and I'm noticing different trends is another area would probably be I'm from Mississippi I looked in like Mississippi, Tennessee, because those are areas I'm very familiar with. But the problem is with those areas, I think the permits would probably be more lax. Just like in Gatlinburg area, a little bit more relaxed. I think you can easily get permits for what you're trying to do, at least easier than areas that are a little pricier, I guess. Um, the South area seems like it's a little bit easier to do those types of things. And But the only thing I ran into was the monthly or the, the the nightly rate that glamping goes for a lot of my research was showing that the nightly rate just wasn't it wasn't there like I would like to book the tents at at least 150 like that's the lowest I would like to be booking them and like North Carolina area or South Carolina that area I looked and like outside of Charlotte and it seemed like the the rates were were pretty low. They were under a hundred dollars, and that just for me for the infrastructure, the cost, the time, and building it all out and turning it into a viable business, it just wasn't enough for me. It wouldn't be turning enough profit. I would really have to build a lot of tents and units and really focus on marketing to make sure they stay completely booked up and I would keep turning them over and not have a lot of vacancy to make that a good business decision for me. But for people who just put a few tents in their backyard, things like that, it gets a little bit better because you're already just living on the land. You have that extra land just sitting there. Like why not capitalize on it? Why not build something really cool? And it's pretty easy for you to manage because it's just in your backyard and I think that's probably a good option because you don't really run into a lot of issues as far as with the county. That would be pretty nice. And the land is a little bit cheaper in that area as well. The only thing is I don't I don't think glamping is as up and coming there as other areas in the US. Just because in the South, I'm from the South, as I said earlier, um, in the South it does get really hot and muggy and I think to kind of lure people in, you would have to supply some type of way to make the tent a little bit cooler so that they're comfortable. And I don't know, you would just have to do something so that it's not so unbearably hot because I remember not having a lot of air growing up and oh my gosh, it was so unbearable. Like we would open the windows, but it, there was not hardly any breeze. It was absolutely stifling inside like maybe more of a yurt kind of more of a permanent type structure that you could kind of build out and have more electricity and maybe bathroom and have an air conditioner or something in there something that keeps out all the bugs and stuff there's a lot of mosquitoes in the southern area because it's very muggy and probably doing maybe like a cabin or something like that just different ways of doing it. Maybe like an A-frame that you build yourself or like a treehouse type of thing. Just, I think those 
those seem to book out pretty well. Like if you have a cabin or if you have a glamping kind of like tree house, those I think will stay booked. It's just those are more expensive to build versus putting a tent that's really cool and decorated nicely. That's what I'm looking at. So for me, I'm trying to find what's the lowest cost for me to get into this business and get something built that's really cool that I can be proud of and the design is really nice. So then I can turn around and build even cooler ideas that I have and ideas that cost even more money. One of the ideas I was working on, I actually sent them an email. They haven't responded to me. I don't think it's available to the public, but they build space like stuff for space they build housing for like mars or something and their design looks really cool so i was like oh that would look really neat and so i had asked them about it i don't think that they're selling to the public though i think they're just like a company making cool designs i i don't know but it'd be really cool all right my camera actually died so it is the next day which is why i'm wearing a different outfit I was thinking about just putting on my sweater from yesterday and just filming, but you know, we need a change of, I guess, style. But uh, I don't even remember where I was at. I think I was talking about putting some kind of structures that the company is making for Mars. Like that's the kind of idea or the experiences that I wanna be creating. I wanna be creating things that you don't necessarily see out in your like daily life and I want to make the design that's just, have a really cool look, either geometrically really cool or aesthetically just beautiful or just fascinating. I wanted to create something that people go and they kind of feel like they're submerged in a different planet or a different world or it just unlocks their imagination. I think that that's just really cool to kind of marry the two, like nature, which I absolutely love, and like ecotourism with creating something that is just so imaginative and creative because a lot of people these days i feel like once you become kind of an adult you kind of forget how how to like dream or you kind of lose touch with that inner self of i guess hope and possibility that I feel like I kind of move through the world strangely compared to other people. Like everyone always thinks that I'm overly ambitious or I'm too much of a dreamer or I just have too many ideas. I'm always just too much for people. Or at least that's the kind of pushback I feel like I get when I'm at a job because I usually am super excited about it and I try to like come up with all these different ways of like what we could be doing because I like improving and I like, I don't like mediocre. I don't like basic. I want, if I'm going to do something, I want it to be absolutely spectacular. And a lot of jobs, they just, they just don't like that. They don't like people who are creative, at least the roles that I get. I'm sure creativity is valued highly in certain roles. Um, but those types of roles, I guess I just don't have the proper experience or skill set or time with it to get those roles. So I kind of am a fish out of water. I don't really, I don't really fit anywhere. It's like, I don't, the water doesn't really want me and then land doesn't really suit me. I don't know, maybe that's a weird analogy, but that's just how I feel. And I'm definitely gonna be doing a series on um, my experiences in the workforce for my entire life and career and kind of what happened in those kind of situations because I always like to think back on them and kind of dissect it and figure out like why things were going wrong, what went wrong, like it's, you know, all those types of things. Cause it's good for your own like self for improvement or if it's something that you need to like work on. Cause I'm all about like personal growth and being your best self that you can be. What other videos do you want me to do on glamping? I would love to connect with other super highly creative people that are overly ambitious in this world or the world thinks they're too ambitious and positive. That would be amazing. I would love it. Comment down below and let me know just what type of videos you wanna see. This video is probably way too long though, so I'm gonna go. I have to drink coffee and I need to have my meeting with the small business center, so.
I will see you guys in the next video.